Welcome to the Creating Wealth and Wellness Podcast. Your hosts, Amanda Kingsley and Tara Masildine, team up to take you on a journey where freedom is cultivated through personal development, where women connect to fuel their futures, and where wealth is created as a byproduct of being well. Hi, everybody. I am Tara Misseldine. I am so grateful that you are joining Amanda Kingsley and I. She is on the other line um, for our very first inaugural pilot episode of the Wealth and Wellness podcast. Um, We are insanely grateful that you are taking the time to get to know us and what we're trying to bring to you here. Um, And even more so, we are grateful in advance for what you're all going to bring to the table, um, helping us grow as well. So as you heard in our intro, this show is about three things. We're going to be talking about where freedom is actually cultivated through personal development, where women connect to fuel our futures, and where wealth is created as a byproduct of being well. So these are three things that Amanda and I know to be true. Um, So we're going to take these first three episodes with you and actually talk about how we know those, (laughs) how we know that they are true. Um, So we're going to open up the conversation with you today with where freedom is cultivated through personal development. So Amanda, say hi to everybody. (laughs) Yay, this is so exciting. I know, it's happening. Um, I know, we're actually doing it. I've been talking about hosting a podcast, (laughs) being part of a podcast for so long. So thank you, Tara. Um, you've, You've taken the reins on this and I really appreciate it. And I'm so excited to get to know our audience and serve them more of what they're looking for in life. Yeah. Awesome. Me too. I've been wanting to get back into podcasting for quite a while. I had a super fun podcast a couple of years ago, um, which I gave up because life just shifted so much. Um, and my conditions were it had to be the right podcast with the right co-host because I didn't want to do it all this time. So boom, two. How cool is technology <laughs> too that we can do this? Like it's just so cool. I know. Okay. It really, it really is. So we are talking today about the first like our first truth here at the Wealth and Wellness Podcast, and that is that freedom is cultivated through personal development. So I've already talked a lot this show. I'm going to hand it to you. What the heck does this phrase mean to you, Amanda? (laughs) Good question. Um, Let's see. I've done a lot of things, right? We've, a lot of us have done a lot of things in our life that we can sort of stack up. Um, And it wasn't until my most recent business, my most recent shift in the last three years that I really integrated personal development into my profession. And whether we like it or not, (laughs) it's hard to work on the kind of things that are like really developing us as human beings and growing into who we are and thinking about our dreams and thinking about um, like the big life stuff when we're super busy in our like traditional going to work, getting up, getting the kids to where they need to go. And so I was fortunate enough to find a profession in which personal development was not only encouraged, but necessary, like non-negotiable. And so I have found such an immense amount of freedom literally in every moment of my life because of the concepts that I just continue to learn and tweak and relearn and practice (laughs) (laughs) and just the constant integration of growth. I've always been a person of growth. Like if I'm not growing, I'm dying. Like that's just Mm -hmm. always felt true to me. And so the gift of finding work that required personal development has just given me so much freedom in my life. And, um, that it just, this truth is so deeply important to me. Mm. Okay. So I just had the most awesome visual when you were talking about like, if you're not growing, you're dying. Um, I remember being a kid and hearing someone talk to me about the science of the universe constantly expanding. Mm. And I think that's true even on like that micro personal level, like the world and our experience and the universe is always expanding. And if we are not expanding, then we're actually shrinking because everything around us is getting bigger and farther away. So I love that. Thank you. That was like a really profound statement for me. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. But that's so awesome. true. Like, And when you get stuck in life, right, it's like you are shrinking. It's like you're closed in on, everything feels heavy, everything feels tight. And 
personal development work. There's so many elements of it. And maybe we should step back and talk about what does freedom mean? Yeah. <laughs> personal development. But that's what it is. It's this expansion. It's like everything just opens and feels alive and big and wide and vast and possible. <laughs> possible. Um, exactly. Yeah. Growth is a beautiful thing. But yeah. Both of us relate to freedom a lot. Because I mean, we're both, you know, we, I, I know that both of our archetypes have a lot of explorer in them. <laughs> so that is a value that is like key to the explorer archetype. Um, so when, when you ask, it's, this is probably true for you too, but when I say like, oh, this is what I want in my life and somebody says why and like keeps diving down like why, what will that get you? What will that get you? It always boils down to freedom for me. Um, yeah. That's what I want. I want all of my... You know, I want every action in my life to be a choice that I've made leading toward one of my freedoms. Um, So the other word that I love about this phrase, like freedom is cultivated through personal development. Like the word cultivated is also something that resonates so deeply with me. Um, We crafted this message like really intentionally. So what did you mean when we decided on the word cultivated? Mm. Um, uh, cultivate to me is such a terror word. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> for good reason. <laughs> I still, wait, I still want to jump back to freedom for a second because I think it. that, I think that it's such a, um, hot topic word and people use it, but don't really know what it means. I just want to define what it means for me, for our listeners, because what it really means for me is being able to make choices based on my own, like from my heart center, right? Make Mm -hmm. choices based on my own desires and dreams and goals and um, ethics and morals without someone else saying, no, you can't do that. Now, this is where it always gets tricky for people. Like, do I have to stop at a stop sign? Yes, like I do have to stop at a stop sign. Well, I actually don't have to, but I choose to. Part of that freedom in stopping at a stop sign for me is safety, right? Like is living in a place that has structured safety. Or like, do I have to wash my toilet? That's another one people are like, well, (laughs) if I were truly free, I'd never wash my toilet. Well, then your toilet would be really disgusting. And are you really free if you're living with a disgusting (laughs) toilet? So people get really finicky about this like concept of, of freedom and doing whatever you want whenever you want to, but it really is that. And if you're honest with yourself, like, Choosing to live in a home with a clean toilet is a choice toward freedom, which sometimes you are choosing to clean it yourself. Maybe sometimes you're choosing to pay someone else to clean it. But um, for me, it just really means like not making decisions based on my bank account or my boss or um, right, right. Say that again? I say, or, or any other external constraint, like yeah. the financial constraint, but then there's also like, you know, social things and moral things and you know we want to be able to choose intentionally and then that deeper level stuff which is like not making choices based on self-limiting beliefs which I'm sure we'll talk about a ton in this show but um sometimes your those belief systems and stories you've told yourself are what are really keeping you from being free I guess you could argue that's always what's keeping you from being free Mm -hmm. but um But yeah, there's so many layers to not letting other things dictate. So if I have a story that I'm not good enough or I'm not smart enough, that's keeping me from achieving this goal of freedom. Um, And it's the personal development that gets us there. And so the tools we use to cultivate (laughs) that freedom (laughs) um, are many. And I love one of my favorite books recently has been um, Get Rick. Get rich, lucky bitch. And (laughs) the concept I love from it is that she says, like, who cares what's working? Just throw everything at it. And so I think that's another important thing about personal development is, like, it's not one thing. It, it's never one thing. It's like, it might be a focus on one thing for a little while and then a focus on another thing for a little while, but it's, it's just throw it all in it, throw it in <laughs> whatever fertilizer is going to work, like put it in there and let it do its thing. Yeah. Oh mate, I love that because even, you know, something that might be 
Like once you actually reach the next level on an area of your life, sometimes it fuels you to go even farther in that area. And sometimes it fuels you to like up level everything else in your life to meet it. Yeah. So it can't, it can't be like one avenue of personal growth or like only one area that you're getting better in. And you know, one, one thing about personal growth that I, or personal development that I feel very strongly about is like playing more to your strengths than trying to like overcome your weaknesses, which that's not, it's not how everybody feels about personal development, but that's, it's definitely what I subscribe to because like, I don't really want to spend a ton of my life energy getting slightly better at the things I really naturally suck at. I would <laughs> rather yeah, get like herb and like freaking amazing at the things I'm naturally good at because it's way more fun for me to be there. Um. <laughs> Which is also like celebrating your wins. That's another yeah. big big game changer is like celebrate your wins which is similar like celebrate the things you're good at and yeah. you're going to bring more of that you know yeah. and and for me it's also like a piece of um it turns a strength into a gift so yeah. like if you're if you're really awesome at something it's not really a gift until you're so good at it that you can actually share it and that it can overflow and like you can give it to the world or give it to other people and that's really where I want to spend most of my time is in my gifts, you know, bringing those forward. I want to spend time in your gifts too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kara. So yes, I, I'm sure everybody will get to know that we admire one another's gifts a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, you. That's why we're here. No, you're awesome. No, you're awesome. And all you <laughs> listeners, you're awesome. And you're so awesome. <laughs> and you, and you, and you. <laughs> Um, let's just do a run through of like places we seek personal development. Want to do that? Like, do you want to give a list of like maybe five things where you places that you go to or that have been really meaningful to you in growth? Okay, but I'm gonna suggest that we actually go back and forth because I don't know what any of yours are gonna be, and I don't want to take all of yours because I oh, you you can take them all. I, I want to be just like Tara. Same here. Twinkle fingers. Twinkle fingers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So where, where do I seek personal growth and development or personal development? Um, let's see. I, I would say the number one is like people I admire. I try to model them, like model after them. So, mm -hmm. and it, you know, just because I'm modeling one aspect of someone, um, doesn't necessarily mean that I want to be them or I want to be like exactly like them. Mm. So I will pick, actually, this is something that uh, Tony Robbins, you know, the amazing speaker, world famous, you know, like in inspirer of multitudes. Um, this is something that he says, when you see someone that excels or, you know, is a, a prime example of something you want more in yourself, do what they're doing, you know? Right. Um, so I, I listen to people that I admire and I try out the thing. They don't always work. Sometimes I really don't like doing the thing that that person does. <laughs> or sometimes it's just way too hard to be like them. But that's one of the areas that I try first is like modeling something that I admire in who, someone else. Who says that? Like, who says? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it started, but, but like who started this concept that the five people you surround yourself. Oh, Jim Rohn. Yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it's one of the Rohn. big guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, you'll find this on this podcast like forever. So let me just say today that I'm terrible at name recollection. <laughs> um, so you're going to be my fill in all the time. Like, who's yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah. Jim Rohn's concept that we are the, combination of the five people we spend the most time with. It's super powerful. And what I love most about that was when someone defined that for me in like, it doesn't have to be literally who, who you're in your space with, right? So Tony Robbins as an example, right. if you're listening to his podcast or reading his book all day or watching him on YouTube, like if he's a part of your daily life, like that can count. <laughs> oh, absolutely be one of the five people you spend most of your time with. Um, but that's such a good one. Um, yeah. Definitely, definitely. And I found that you, noticing in social media how my news feed changed over the three years when I really, truly understood and dug into personal development, it was like 
eye-opening yeah. um, because I just started sculpting it to be a feel-good place. And I think it's a really good, we should do a whole, we should do a whole show on social media and sculpting it to be an inspiring place. Oh my God. Yeah. Cause actually you do social media really well. And I've, I've given like keynote talks about, you know, the, <sighs> how damaging it can be to be comparing, you know, our behind the scenes and like bloopers to everybody's highlight reel, which is definitely something that comes up a lot and it's so toxic, but you do it really well. So I think that's an awesome idea for a show. For sure. Yeah. We'll, we'll table that, but for sure, like sculpting your spaces so that they make you feel good. And if that means getting off social media, then get off social media. But, um, but who, who there is influencing how you go about your day? Yes, definitely. All right. Because so, people spend a lot of time on social media these days. Totally. <laughs> but actually, if we're talking about social media, um, I, I know there's people who really don't like memes. <laughs> and for anyone who doesn't know what a meme is in 2017, it's those pictures with words, often like an inspiring quote or something. And I know there's people who get really like have the whole story around memes and what a waste of space they are. <laughs> I actually love them. I love them. I love creating them. They can shift a moment for me so dramatically. Um, but if you really, you can use those short little bursts of inspiration. They've been a part of my personal development journey. It's like really think about what someone's trying to say in this tiny little box and how does it apply or not apply to my life. Mm -hmm. I love memes. <laughs> <laughs> we love memes. <laughs> Um, so I, you know, I, I know that we're in the middle of a question, like, where do we seek personal growth? But it's also occurring to me that I, I love the way that we have phrased this or the way that I was, I'm actually going to say the way that this came through us, because that's really the way that it was people. We were like sitting on Amanda's deck and like, what is our mission with this podcast? What are we trying to do? And it, it was like, boom, 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 lightning strikes of, of awesome. <laughs> and when you look at this phrase, freedoms cultivated through personal development, like the essence here is that, you know, it's what we're doing is actually seeking freedom, but we're focusing on personal development. The freedom is the byproduct, you know, yeah. freedom is what we are growing by using the tools and resources in our lives to pursue personal growth. Like, that's what we're getting at here. Freedom is not the destination. Freedom is the fruit. You yeah. know, you can't, like, you can't prioritize freedom in your life. And if you did, it would probably be pretty catastrophic. <laughs> I wouldn't even know how to do that. I know. And, well, I think that's part of the problem is that a lot of us so desperately want this. But when we're focusing on that, we're not focusing on the pathway from here to there. Because there, there is no there. That is like that's the fruit that grows on the tree after you have cultivated yourself. Yep. You know. So I just I want to make that clear that <laughs> I that's what I love about this this phrase this trope. Um, yeah, and the it's the teeny tiniest moments that make the biggest difference too, right? I used to be the kind of person who would need milk at the grocery store, right? And I think we must be coming up on time. Did you set a timer? Because we're Talk about it. Yeah, yeah, we're but, um, a minute away from our minute warning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's in the teeniest, tiniest moments that you notice and the shifts. Like I say I needed milk at the grocery store and I'd go and I'd get so frustrated that I couldn't find a parking space, right? Like and let that suddenly affect my day. Like, uh. oh, the world is against me. There's nowhere to park. <laughs> and as you dig deeper and deeper into personal growth work you the the stories around that shift right like oh i guess i wasn't meant to park right there today <laughs> and then you'll park somewhere else and you'll bump into an old friend or you'll find a five dollar bill on the ground or and so it's noticing those teeny tiny moments and not letting like something that's seemingly negative or frustrating um 
shape your day or your life. And so freedom is in every single little moment. It's in every, it's in the big picture, but it's in all the little pieces that make up the big picture. Absolutely. And that I'm, I'm reading a book right now, which I suggest that everybody read. It's um, Liz Gilbert's newest book, Big Magic. Um, I love it. <clears throat> and there's this one little line in there, which is like, just, just, stuck in there amongst all of the other anecdotes <laughs> and I like I can't get this line out of my head it's been in there for a month she's talking about this you know this sort of annoying thing that happened to her and then she has a semicolon and it says and since I wasn't in the mood to ruin my life that day <laughs> um. <laughs> I decided to take it a different way uh, and I just love that idea because like you know talking about that parking space and any of those crappy little things they so don't have to be crappy and we're the ones that get to decide you're like mm, yeah I that's the that's the are. important part we're the ones who get to decide yeah, every yeah. single yeah. thing like if you're ticked off and if things are spiraling out of control like are you actually in the mood to ruin your life today you know <laughs> <laughs> thanks liz Gilbert. that's a great question that i ask myself a lot now <laughs> <laughs> what I am I in the mood for right now? That's all life ruination? No. All right. So I think that uh, is there anything else that you want to say to like? Uh, no, I mean this. This just this concept. For like us? you said, the whole podcast is going to be pieces of each of these truths, yeah. just weaving into every episode. So. Um, yeah, there's so much more to say that will that will come, and it's been fun. Yeah. So stay with us, everybody. And tell us what you think. Like, please jump on, talk to us, let us know um, what you think about any of the things that we said, or like, what does this bring up for you? What is this, this idea, either freedom or like cultivating the life we want, personal growth and development? What do these things mean to you? We really want to know, like, that's why we're here. So thanks until next time. Thanks for joining us for another episode. If you haven't already done so, please do us the honor of leaving a rating and review on iTunes and check in with us on social. Amanda Kingsley is a work from home mother of three. Her mission is to free parents from financial stress so they can spend more time being present with their children. Learn more at her website, thewhyhive.com. Tara Masildine is a passionate entrepreneur, founding several businesses over the last 15 years. She's currently living the adventure of being a CEO, mom, and collaborative coach. Find her at allin.life.